Hey, I'm Daniel Hayes. We're down here in Mississippi doing a little uh, turkey hunting with Huckberry. We got Mike Adele, Brad Leone, and a few other of our buddies. We've got a cool family uh, turkey vest here. We're gonna show you a little bit of what's inside. The origins of our family and our like long turkey hunting traditions and the origins of Moss Hick and everything goes back to my granddad in the early days. My granddad's kind of known as Turkey Hunting's greatest generation. He's 92 now, he's still around turkey hunting and, and uh, Moss Hick is almost 40 years old, so we decided that it would be pretty cool to, to build a vest in his honor. Got a, a lot of really cool things about it, but uh, I think the first thing that stands out uh, is the pattern. Um, bottom land, the pattern on the outside is the pattern that Moss Hick started with in 1986. Uh, my dad was a 25-year-old uh, obsessed turkey hunter. Him and my granddad hunted nearly every day with each other, and they were uh, obsessed with this idea that they could become invisible uh, to wildlife. Turkey hunting has a lot of proud traditions, and tradition is important, and so this is a, a really traditional turkey vest, and I think that's uh, a proper tribute to my granddad being around as long as he has. So we got quite a few things in here. The first thing in here that I think is the coolest is these old compasses, so, you know, we're all spoiled now because we've got uh, high-tech maps on our phone and you can pretty much go in the woods anywhere you want and if you've got phone service, you're probably not going to get lost. Um, but back in the day, my dad and my granddad, they always had my grandmother sew a uh, compass into their vest. My granddad's name is Fox, which is what this shirt is for, so this vest is called the Mr. Fox Vest. Um, we took the last compass from uh, his old turkey vest and put it on the prototype. I've got dad's old one right here that kind of stays uh, in my vest as a, a little good luck token. This uh, call is a really unique pot call made with a, a piece of copper. Um, him and my dad both, they've, they've really, since the early days, instilled uh, the values of spending as much time in the outdoors as possible and, and making sure you're leaving it better than you found it. It's a, a cool reminder of uh, what it's all about at the end of the day. Some of the best handmade small batch shotgun ammo in the country is, is loaded just down the road at Apex. And uh, with Mike and Brad coming down, they uh, made some shells custom for them. We got Ramble on, uh, on the shells right there. So these in particular are pretty sweet. My dad over the years had a lot of great relationships in the call making community. So the house I grew up in has just hundreds of turkey calls that people have seen him over the years. So that's uh, a box call that uh, I took out of his vest. I always like to pack a book in my vest. Anybody who turkey hunts will recognize Colonel Tom Kelly in 10th Legion. 555 copies were made of this book and now it's one of the most coveted treasures in the world of turkey hunting literature. This one is really special. This one is fragile. Definitely should not be going in my turkey vest, so that's why I got the new copy over here. It was uh, published in the early 70s, and it uh, kind of became known way before my time as uh, a turkey hunter's manifesto. More than anything, it was about the people and the, the kind of cult that makes up the, the really, really hardcore uh, community of turkey hunters that are thinking about it 12 months out of the year, and it never leaves their mind. Cigars, so that's pretty much the, uh, the tale of two turkey hunts right there. If uh, you get stumped, but you don't have any, anywhere to go and you got some time to kill, sit down with your back up against a tree and do a little reading and, uh, and enjoy your quiet time in the woods. And if you uh, were lucky enough to kill a turkey, cigar is just an easy way to uh, sit there and if you like to smoke, uh, contemplate, think about the hunt. Good way to spend a morning in the woods. One of the coolest calls uh, that I have the mossy oak tree was an actual tree down in South Alabama where my granddad and my dad uh, would turkey hunt. So uh, that was the inspiration for the name, where it all came from. And this call is made from the wood from the tree. So it, uh, a tree died, uh, crashed over in a storm. And luckily we were able to salvage some of the wood. That one's pretty special. I don't hunt with that one every morning because if I were to break that, it'd be a pretty sad day. Another cool part about this vest in particular, since it is a really traditional vest, uh, we wanted to have a, a piece of the vest that someone could take with them if they were going light. You know, if you're just going with a bottom harness or uh, a harness around your neck for your call, or whatever. But we've got this mouth call lanyard. It's, a, it's a, a cool way to carry a piece of the vest, no matter if you're hunting with the vest itself or not. And then one of the most underrated things you can have is a pair of hedge clippers. This is about as handy as it gets for throwing together a last minute blind, chopping off some limbs, throwing them out in front of you. If nothing else, uh, concealing some of your movement from the waist down uh, with your legs and, and whatever is gonna, gonna go a long way to helping keep you as close to invisible as possible. And then certainly last but not least, toilet paper in a Ziploc bag comes in handy. This vest actually has a waterproof pocket on it, but uh, you know, creature habits, so you gotta keep it in the Ziploc anyway. 
I'm sure there are more things in this vest that I could uh, find. That's a lot of it. I don't always have that many things in my vest, but a lot of these uh, are big time essentials. They're all special for different reasons. They're all really cool pieces of it.